This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this simple karaoke text. Now the technique is pretty simple and uses mostly masks, so a lot of this tutorial is going to deal with how After Effects treats audio and how you can work with audio in After Effects. So let's get into the tutorial and make some text to the music. Okay, so here in After Effects, what I'm going to show you is just one of the statements that we're going to put in, and then you can extrapolate that into the rest of the piece. So you can see there aren't too many layers, and I'm just going to go ahead and start over from scratch. So I make a new composition that's going to be basically the size and frame rate of whatever the playback is it's going to be. If this is just going to be on YouTube or whatever, then don't worry too much about these settings but I'm going to go with HDTV 1080 24 frames a second. Now, the first thing to know about audio in After Effects is that audio isn't measured in frames, it's only measured in time. So whatever frames per second you go about putting these things on, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Now the other thing is that if you want to create a comp that's exactly the same length as your source file, you just have to drag it down onto the new comp button and it'll create a composition that's named exactly the same as your audio. It'll be the same length and it'll use the video settings of the last comp you made. So that's just how you do that. So looking at this audio, the first thing I want to show you are some of the properties unique to audio layers. If I hit L, it's going to bring up the audio levels. And if I hit LL, like hitting L twice, it'll pull up the waveform. And this shows you what it's analyzed the audio to be. So you can see there is audio certainly on here. One of the most common complaints I hear is when I press play, I don't hear anything. Or I imported my audio, but I can't hear the audio. Well, that's because when I hit spacebar, for example, it's going to preview, but it previews without audio. All right. And another thing is if you want to hear the audio, you can simply just press the period button over on your number pad. For premiumbeat.com. And that'll play just the audio. Now, the other thing you can do is you can hold down command or control and then you grab the playhead. Or and as you drag it, it will play the audio that's at the playhead. So that's a way to scrub through, we say, and find audio. Another thing is if you RAM preview and you have the audio on, you can mute it or not, but RAM previewing will play the audio with the video, but it will have to render and then play it. So that's essentially what we're looking at. Now, some other things to know about audio is it doesn't have as many properties. You can't move it. You can't see it. If you're going to work with the audio that comes from video, um, you'll have an eyeball here and you know, an audio tick here as well. And essentially, if you want to use that audio, you just have to poke the eye out, and then you always have the audio track on here. So it's just another layer of information. And if you want to have the video still there, go nuts. Um, it's not going to change the audio here. So just remember, this is a kind of layer, just like any other layer that just has special information on it. After Effects isn't known for its ability to do anything with audio. So you may find some of the tools and some of the navigating and some of these processes to be a little bit counterintuitive, but I think a lot of the thinking behind that was to get audio out of the way so it's not taking up space when you do visual things, because After Effects is primarily a visual medium. So let's uh, make use of that and uh, make some stuff. So the first thing I want to do is make a new solid and create a background. Uh, usually with these weird retro things, uh, we're looking at a blue background, so I'm going to make that cool. And then I'm going to apply a ramp to that, called a gradient ramp here in Adobe CC, which puts a, a dark side and a light side. I'm going to swap those so it's light at the top. And then I'm just going to simply blend it with the original, all right? So when I do that, you can see you can go from you know, 100% of the original to uh, zero, and uh, I just want a little bit of the gradient in to make the top lighter, bottom darker, so this seems to be doing exactly what I wanted, which is great. Now, the next thing we want to do is put some text on. So I'm going to lock that layer because I have no more interest in changing it, and I'm going to create some new text. 
I believe the text I want is this is Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com, something like that. So this is the correct way to spell it. Cool, cool. So let me just uh, play back the audio here really quick. This is Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. Good. So this is one statement here. And hit LL to bring up that waveform. And that's as far as we need to go. I'm going to set a marker out here so that I can know that this is end of statement one and just keep everything nice and organized. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first set up uh, the base for things. So the text is going to be white and it's going to have a stroke that's black on it. Maybe something like that. And I'm going to expand this up to be around this big so it's nice and readable. All right, so this can come up a little bit to 10. Cool. I'm going to change it from metric to optical. And I think I'm happy with that. So this is the text so that people can read it. You know, they can kind of see it before they know they have to sing it is, I guess, the idea behind this. You want to use a nice and legible font, you know, things like Arial, Verdana, whatever. Uh, nothing too fancy. Probably want to avoid uh, serifs altogether just because, you know, they're, they're harder to read. For example, you know, we look at Arial, looks like this, uh, but uh, Times New Roman looks like this. You see it's a lot more difficult. So, you know, stick with something easy to read. Uh, if you have Helvetica, I would recommend using that because every street sign seems to use it. Something bold is also good. Assume that people have bad eyesight and uh, maybe put the tracking out a little bit. So now we're going to use masks to reveal this and then we're going to use masks again to make it a new color. So let's start off by drawing masks around the shape. So I've just selected the layer and I'm just drawing on these masks. Okay. If you've worked with masks before, then you're probably familiar with some of the options. Uh, we have the mask path, which we're going to be interested in keyframing, for example. And then we also have things like the feather and the opacity and the expansion. And you can also change the color of these masks, for example, to make them a nice bright red so that they're easier to see, or you can make it a nice bright green so it's easy to see and visually different than the other mask. You can rename masks as something like top line. You can rename this mask something like bottom line, and that's pretty good as well. So what we'd like to do is set this up so that we can animate these on. So I'm here at frame 20. I've set keyframes on the mask paths, and this is going to be our end state for those paths. They're both set to add, meaning the area of this mask is going to add to the layer and what is visible. You can set them to subtract if you'd like to do this backwards, but I uh, don't see why you would. So I'm going to select this top path here, and you can either do this by double clicking on it and then scaling it down like so using the transform controls. That's one way to do it. Or you can select the points and move the points around. These are both equally valid ways to do this. All right. And then here at the end, I just want to make sure that I'm animating them to just the end or as close to where the end is. If you start animating them to be all the way out here, that's fine, but you don't have as much control about what you're looking at. So uh, I'm going to want this one to come on and then this one. So that's how I've set up the keyframes. Whoosh, whoosh, kind of like that. Now, I also want this to come on before there's any audio, so I'm just going to offset this a little bit, like so, so that the words are coming up and then it's time to talk. Perfect. So now we're going to use this layer to time the rest of things. Now this little point that I've put in here is no longer relevant because I've moved. <laughs> Just readjust it like that. And now we're going to go through and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to change its properties so that it is the highlighted part. Okay. 
So the first thing is we don't need a stroke on it. What we do need is the fill. The fill can be the exact same size and the fill is going to be a nice bright yellow. All right, good. So this is going to highlight and we're gonna go into its mask and we are going to set more keyframes so that this takes longer to come on than anything else. So you want to time it so that at the start it's not there. And then you want to go ahead to the end. So this is where the top line has ended like this. And then the bottom line begins. Just like this. And now you have to go through and make sure that these things are finished by the time speaking them is finished. So. So this should stop here, right? Because the word this is done being said, right? And now it's gone too far because I haven't started saying the first letter of my name yet. And then some fine adjustments can be required. This. So let's see how that goes by just blocking this off. This is Adam Abrams for PremiumBeat.com. So far, so close. You have to anticipate there's going to be some lag time between seeing these things come on and then actually saying them. So remember, we're going to do this for the second line where we're going to start here and then. So four, this looks correct. Cool, put a keyframe there. <laughs> the word premium should be on. <laughs> Beat. <laughs> dot, so say the dot right there. Good, perfect. And then we take those and we bump those back just a bit. Okay, so look at that again. This is Adam Abrams for PremiumBeat.com. Perfect. So now you've got everything being highlighted. Since the next phrase is about to come on, you are going to need to get rid of these. Now you want to get rid of all of them at once. Uh, so you could either put out a mask layer that's going to remove both of them using track mats, or we can just call up the masks of both of these and uh, I guess make them go away. So we're gonna set keyframes for both of these. Move ahead 10 frames and simply grab them like so. Move them like this. And we wanna make sure using our rulers that we animate uh, both of them to be in the same spot, or what you can just do is copy these keyframes, select the keyframe down here, and paste. Copy and paste. So now, when we look here, they both get removed at exactly the same time. We want to push the top line to be removed first, And there we go. And then you can repeat the process with the rest of your sentences. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Now, the things to remember from this tutorial are that people have to see before they say, so make sure you allow some lag time. And remember those things I talked about with audio. To see the waveform, hit LL. To hear the waveform, do that holding down command or control and scrub through, or hit the decimal point on the number pad. And when you RAM preview, make sure it's not muted. And that should be everything you need to get around and work with audio. And this is a bit of a primer for timing things to audio, but 
Also, I've had a lot of requests around to make a tutorial about karaoke text, so hopefully this helps you belt out some 80s classics. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, just like it says up there. Premium Beat is a great place for royalty-free sound effects and music, so if you're looking for some music to practice with, then uh, go pick some up. And of course, check out the blog for tips and tricks and tutorials from not only myself about After Effects, but other people about After Effects and other people about different programs to use. There are a lot of experts here on Premium Beat who are putting out a lot of great material you should definitely read. If you're interested in seeing more stuff from me, then you should check out the author section here at Premium Beat or head over to evanabrams.com or check out my YouTube channel, uh, EC Abrams on the YouTubes, or uh, if you want to just chat about After Effects, uh, hit me up on Twitter, at EC Abrams on there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Premium Beats channels, and uh, definitely check out their library of excellent royalty-free music and sound effects. Thanks again, and I'll see you around the internet.